So, funny story, the last trip I took pre-COVID was out to Washington State. And now, a year and a half later, first time I'm going out of the North Carolina slash Tennessee area, straight back to Washington. Can't stay away from this state, but Morning, I can't complain. Morning. Let's look at this view. <laughs> we are spending the next couple days here in Mount Rainier National Park. I'm here with my man, Eric. Hello. <laughs> and funny enough, we've actually been backpacking quite a bit the last three days. That's a story for another day, but point is we are absolutely just physically done. We are absolutely whooped from the last few days of hiking. And we opted to go with something easy to start off, something that our legs could handle, something that wouldn't take much hiking. So we came to this lake right off the road, right here in the park overlooking Mount Rainier, but it has not disappointed. We've watched this red and orange light kind of hit the mountain as the sun's come up. Giant Mount Rainier just looming in the background, perfectly reflected in this little lake. We've been running around getting a few different angles of it. Couldn't be more stoked, great way to start off the next couple days here, finally seeing this big ass mountain for the first time. So, stoked to bring you along. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I just gotta stand there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say take five steps forward. Oh my god, this looks wild. Just stand there and influentially throw your arms up. All right, put it back down. gonna look crazy. Just through the viewfinder it looks wild. As beautiful as that sunrise was, the footage ended up being an absolute nightmare. To grade for several different reasons, some of them more or less inevitable, and some of them just irrefutable user error on my part. And in this video, I want to dive into all those different reasons and then all of the different tools and techniques that I use to correct for them and mitigate their effects throughout the grading process. And hopefully you can get some techniques and anecdotes from this video that'll help you out the next time you're working with footage that was poorly exposed, shot in bad lighting, or for whatever reason, is just not quite cooperating in the grade. So I'm looking forward to this one, but before we jump to that, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, which is of course the homies over at ArtGrid. ArtGrid is a massive library of amazing stock footage shot by filmmakers all over the world. And there's new material added every single day. So you can find pretty much anything you're looking for on here and it's perfect for travel filmmakers. It's also super simple. They just have one license that covers everything. Personal use, commercial use, your client's use of the footage. There's no limitations on the number of views or the audience size that you can share that content with and you can still use that footage even if you don't renew your subscription. Under that one license, there are three different plans depending on the quality of footage that you want to download. So for just $25 a month, you can download anything in their library in HD. For $40 a month, you can download it in 4K and 8K. And for $50 a month, you can download it in 4K and 8K in log and sometimes even raw. I use stock footage on a bunch of projects for a bunch of different reasons, whether that's adding some spice with a cool overlay, finding a shot that I wouldn't have been able to get myself, or even just getting a clip that I forgot to get on location. And whenever I do need some stock footage, ArtGrid comes in absolutely clutch and I can't recommend it enough. So if you want to try it out for yourself, you can use the link in the description of this video to get an additional two months completely free. But all that being said, let's now move on and jump into color grading this annoying, difficult footage. Starting at the beginning of the process, you wanna make sure before you even start grading that you're completely nailing the color correction. If your exposure or white balance are off, that's gonna completely throw off the entire rest of the process. White balance is something that was off in this footage and definitely falls into the user error category. I had my camera on cloudy, which I usually do for a sunrise or sunset, but I failed to take into account that we were shooting in the shadow of a giant mountain that was behind us. So we were completely in the shade and I should have had my camera on shade white balance instead. 
So a lot of the footage is a little bit too cool and that needs to be compensated for in the color correction. So I'm making sure to add a bit more warmth in with those temperature sliders and also take out a bit of magenta. There's also the issue of exposure, which in this case I really had no control over and this one can be blamed entirely on mother nature that scumbag, I know. Because the mountain in the background is so tall and it's covered in snow and ice, it's the only thing catching the light and it is reflecting the absolute hell out of that sunlight. So it's super bright in the background and then the foreground is completely in the shade. So it's super dark. It's an insanely high contrast scene. Part of it is super bright and washed out and then part of it is completely in shadow. It's impossible to properly expose for everything at once. So when I was color correcting and grading, I had to be careful not to add too much contrast or lean the exposure too bright or too dark because any massive change to that exposure and contrast and I would end up either losing detail in the highlights or losing detail in the shadows. There just wasn't much wiggle room with the lighting. Now that we've got that color correction sorted out, let's move on to a bit of actual color grading, starting out by talking a bit about the color wheels. And these are a tool that I don't use too frequently, except for situations like this, when I have footage that's a bit tougher to grade. What's good about the wheels in this case is that they're a lot less destructive than the other tools at your disposal. So rather than going in, with like the hue and saturation curves and taking colors out of the shot or taking the colors that are already there and shifting them around, you're just adding extra color on top of what's already there. So it's a lot less destructive. On this footage, I ended up doing most of my color adjustments with the color wheels rather than the hue curves, which are my usual go-to. So in this case, that meant adding some warmth into the highlights and also shifting those highlights a bit more towards yellow than like red and magenta, and also adding some color contrast by pushing a bit of bluish turquoise into the midtones. The wheels were perfect for this footage, but I wanted to bring out kind of even more separation between the mountain and the background. And that's where masks came in. And these basically just allow you to isolate an adjustment to a certain part of the frame. On a lot of this footage, I've used an elliptical mask to tweak Mount Rainier in the background individually, pushing some reddish orange into the highlights to emphasize that sunlit glow that we have around sunrise and also creating some additional color contrast and bringing out the hazy blue in the mountains around Rainier by pushing some blue and green into the midtones. And on some clips when I could get away with it, I've also pulled down the highlights in that part of the frame just to darken down the mountain a bit, give it some more depth and bring it a little closer to the exposure of the rest of the shot. And then on a couple of shots, I used an additional mask just to subtly lighten up some parts of the foreground so they're not falling completely into shadow. After making all of those adjustments and pumping a ton of additional color into the shot with the wheels and the masks, I end up with a lot of just additional color that I didn't start with. And one artifact of that is a lot of color in the white, like very brightest parts of the shot. So I'll finish off the grade by using the Hue V Luma slider to completely desaturate the very brightest parts of the image, the white pixels, so that they're completely white. And you can see when I add that, the snowy, icy top part of the volcano in the background kind of comes back. It goes from being kind of washed out and yellowy orange to being white like it should be because it's super bright snow. That tool is super helpful for pretty much any shot in my experience, but especially for situations like this where you're pumping a bunch of extra color into the shot. And finally, what I'll leave you with at the end here is just to try and embrace what you're working with, even if it's not completely ideal rather than trying to force it to be something that it isn't. In this case, I had to make a couple of changes to the style I usually like to grade towards so that I could best suit the footage I was working with. I opted to kind of embrace that silhouette look and allowed a lot of the scene to fall into shadow so that I would retain some depth and contrast in the bright mountain in the background. And I've also kept a lot of the saturation and color throughout the shot so that I can keep that color contrast in absence of the contrast in the lighting. I tend to prefer adding a lot of contrast in the grading process, going for something a little punchier, and also desaturating a lot of colors, going for kind of a moodier color palette. 
but that just wouldn't have worked in this case. It would not have benefited the footage I was working with. So I chose to kind of go with the flow and rather than just having tunnel vision and trying to take this footage and turn it into a moody, punchy grade, go a little more with what this footage wanted to be, follow its lead and give it the best grade that I possibly could. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed this one, learned something new from it. And I can't wait to show you the rest of this footage from Washington State. But for now, thank you for watching this one and I'll see you in another video a couple weeks from now.